Good evening peeps, Liesl here again and here we are all again for another extraordinary bits between the bits. Um, I always say straight in because we all know that I like to waffle but uh, I do think today actually, you know, because it is bits between the bits, I've got an excuse to waffle a bit which will be the mainstay of today's thing but we have got some instruments to display. <laughs> Q and A's to answer, uh, one or two other things. So I'm just going to pitch in and straight on, really. So uh, we did have a community member question. It was Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. A very good question, and it actually leads into something I wanted to do a little while ago about boxes, really. So the question was, um, and I'm paraphrasing slightly, but. Um, how many boxes do we have, Liesl, for this year to convert and build and generally create into wonderful cigar box instruments? Oh, there's no short answer to that, <laughs> but I am going to tell you now. So I'm sure you can see behind me, here's a selection of them anyway, and there's a few piled up on top of Stompy here and some very precariously piled up boxes here as you can see and various other things I will go through these by the way um, and kind of elaborate and I was thinking about that question you know how many boxes because you know there's boxes and then there's tobacco tins which I count as boxes obviously especially with our recent visit, shall I say, to the world of Kanjo, because, um, you know, as I say, I knew very little about Kanjo, this being my prototype, and the first one that I ever did build, and then of course along came Candice and Ray, just proves what I say, that it's down to the community, you my wonderful subscribers, and a warm welcome and a huge thanks to my very recent subscribers, um, that bring you inspiration for all these things because uh, yeah that's my prototype and uh, you know I had seen like the traditional canjos with the round can I thought I'm not quite brave enough to attempt one of those yet <laughs> this seemed a good way to go because it was flat right and a little bit like a box shape and that's really how I started with these but um, if you do remember this one, which was briefly featured, um, one or two little changes. Now, as you can see, we now have volume control independently on the can. <laughs> I'm just determined to get the maximum groove out of the smallest little can. Yes, absolutely I am. Everything else is the same, really. Only I fitted this one with that huge piezo. The one that I thought, why did I ever buy this? doesn't fit anything and uh, yes it got broken but I did manage to re-solder it and um, it does actually work and um, if I can reach little Ronan <laughs> we can probably have a little demonstration now I've only just strung this as usual somewhere there and I don't know what it's in to be honest it's either a G or an A or something I don't know <laughs> I will admit it's another one of our instruments to feature. If I can reach behind me and pick up some slides, let's see what we've got. So, as usual, it's chaos in the sound lab. We are getting there, peeps. We are. <laughs> um, yeah, like there's sort of like half room to move now. I want to get this set up and I do apologize for always dipping off a camera but uh, yeah if you saw how small it was in here you'd understand why so let's plug this one in and switch it up oh yeah got that at all As you can 
can tell the piezo is in the lid, so it's picking up every single noise in here. Now, you can prevent that by insulating it with the glue. And I always do, but I didn't with this one for a variety of reasons. I actually wanted it to sound a bit hissy and tinny. Um, also, it was a job getting it all in, actually. And um, the lovely piezo itself had a very strange size of nut um, to hold this on, basically, which I couldn't find one because all the ones I had were just a fraction too small. I thought they were standard size, but uh, obviously not. So I just stuck it in with epoxy resin and it doesn't seem to have moved since. So, <laughs> less from me and let's give it a little rip, shall we? As you can tell, I'm no kanjo player. I'm not used to the like bodiless nature of a kanjo at all. <laughs> Try it with an ordinary slide, shall we? good to me anyway. I will be coming in the future days, in the up and coming days, to you with some live music actually because it did occur to me and again thanks to your wonderful comments. Um, one very big general consensus was to play more live music and to play it loud. So that is what I intend to do in the, the week to come and going forward hopefully. Better just switch roll end off in case we start feeding back again. So yeah, I'm happy with the kanjo, the sort of standard kanjo. The great thing about these is they're all neck, so you can swing them around, you know. And uh, I'll show you a good way to slide actually. I wanted to feature this one. I've never really spoken about this one, which is my Swisher Sweets, absolutely awesome diddly bow. As you can see, this one is a cardboard box. And he's kind of the long lost brother, really, of Big Ben. If you remember the Big Ben build, <laughs> is on there. Because they're the same company, like um, Big Ben was made from a King Edward cigar box. And I think, you know, largely in the UK, maybe Europe and that, they were marketed as King Edwards, but they're Swisher cigars. And here's one from the United States. In Florida because it says so on the back <laughs> and I was lucky to get this I got it in the UK and I kind of struck gold straight away I didn't really realize because it's quite a rare box and initially I went to make it into a hobo fiddle so like a one string violin but the whole thing just kind of fell on its ass basically so I took it apart and made it into a diddly bow but the beauty of this one is I've gone in and lined the inside with wood because I wanted it quite strong and to resonate quite a lot. So it has got a lovely sound. And it's fully acoustic. As you can see, right at the end, I stuck the lid on upside down. <laughs> but I think that just adds to the charm. Yeah, so we'll give him a little go anyway. brief I know but I will actually be featuring the instruments individually coming through the week including Gemma yeah 
So it's quite a unique sound as we know, if you've seen it on the video, going back to last summer. Oh, it seems like ages ago now, doesn't it? So there's that one. You'll be pleased to know that I've got some new strings for Paco. And I've got some Diodarios medium weight, because I think they're going to really suit this instrument. I have just got to set the nut position and the depth still. I want to take my time on that because it's got a nice low action and you can actually play this quite well with your fingers, this one. So yeah, that's hence really why I wanted to slightly lower the action on him. But I am very pleased with this one. And plugged in, he has got a lot of crunch, I've discovered. <laughs> so that will come in very handy for playing it loud. Yeah, Paco, uh, marvellous. Rocky Patel, Eagle Guitar. And to show him off again, really. Other things you can do. I wanted to show you this one here. Right. Now this one I call Tone. <laughs> the reason it's called Tone is because I only had a Tone button to put on the uh, volume control and it just sort of became a bit of a joke really. But this is one that I built just to take away when I went to visit folks and um, I kind of threw them together pretty quick. Now earlier in the week I did post a on the community post, a little photo and a little write up about the first guitar I ever built because I found this online. Like, I couldn't find this photo, but then you know, like Google says, here's some memories for you. And it actually flagged um, Dave the First, if you've seen, the, if you haven't, see the community post, <laughs> it would make sense. Sadly, he is no more. No, he's gone to the great um, rock venue in the sky fell apart basically <laughs> but this one is in a very similar vein you can see it's just cut out you know so that you've got a position for the pegs and this is actually some packing wood that was thrown out in the parking lot um someone moved in and had this great big like refrigeration unit it was <laughs> more than just a freezer you know and dumped all the packing wood outside but that kept me in guitar wood for about two months i was quite happy actually <laughs> but what i really wanted to say about this is that it really is you know scrap wood city basically old box which i stained and just left for ages really it's sort of like nothing fancy bolted into the back you can see the neck going through the body I've forgotten what great sound this one makes, you know, especially with like quite a heavy slider. So it's just. Uh... basic you know there is a piezo pickup in there obviously but um you can see his resonator spring it's before i had any hole cutters so i just did our method of going around with a hand drill actually on this one and i just think this one's amazing you know and yeah it's basically amazing because i didn't think about it i just threw it together <laughs> this is my theory anyway you know what i'm saying so that's that one you know, I've not really featured many of these. Um, yes, much more on the way. Many of you will remember, probably again from back in the summer, we had Dave the Second, who was also in that vein. And here he is. But I thought you might like to see him without his box front. You can see <laughs> how this was just kind of a project of... Uh, Let's make something absolutely cost free or as close to it as we can get. And again, plywood that was a uh, scrap left over from something. In fact, Ray, like her whole neck, she's behind me, as you can see. 
was again a piece of plywood that I found a couple of weeks ago or whatever it was in the parking lot and the whole instrument just evolved should I say around that piece of scrap wood <laughs> so there's Dave we're going to fill this in because he's having this triple piezo which is another thing I said I'd show you because I didn't have one that hadn't already gone into a guitar here it is and this was six pound I think or well, it's cheap because I got a few so it's five pound which is about six dollars US so not expensive really and um I can get it out man. Right? It's got this really funky. I've got to be careful because we know how delicate these things are. And I don't want to get that soldering iron out again. Oh. <laughs> Three piezo discs with buzzers. And this really natty jack plug. It's long, so it's good because you can like go through, you know, quite deep into the body. And I think that's good with a cigar box guitar. Yeah. So, uh, and it's also got this really like fancy end piece, as you saw in Ray. But obviously we couldn't show you because of the cans all closed and everything. So glad to be able to show you that. That's going to go inside Dave the Second or uh, Boulder's Love, as we were calling him through the build. If you remember, there he is. Now you remember it had a great big single coil pickup in there. As you can see, I've removed that and I've just patched it. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> With another piece of cigar box. That's the whole nature of this one, really. Um, it's kind of to highlight what they like when you keep patching them up and uh, going again, you know. And you see some that are just so bodged together that they sound the best. And I must admit, I was quite pleased with his funky headstock. So he's having a triple piezo pickup fitted to him. We're going to put the lid back down and we're going to strengthen that neck as well because I think the joke at the time was if he if the neck lasted six months, it'd be a miracle. Yeah, well, it's lasted a bit longer than that now anyway. Maybe eight months, maybe longer, I don't know. But uh, still going strong and I'll show you how we bodge him back together. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Absolutely. You know, I've got my own sense of humour, as you all know, folks. <laughs> Do bear with me, peeps. Yeah. We're nearly there. We're nearly there, okay. So that's day the second. Now, there is something I want to show you, right? Because we will be branching into um, license plate guitars which I did plan to do last year, but I've only just plucked up the courage. Um, yeah, there is a lovely plate that I'm going to use and I'm building the body, but more about that next time because I haven't got it all to hand and we would be here all night actually if I started talking about that. But what I did want to show you is this, because just before Christmas, I had something of what I'm calling a bit of a result and here it is. Now, if you're in the UK, you'll recognise a very vintage motorcycle number plate. The old black and silver ones, which I think in around 1980 or something like that, they finally changed for like much more highly visible yellow ones. That's right. Now, I did work in the motor industry for years, and I think they probably stopped actually registering with these in about 1974, but I know you can still have them on a car that was manufactured anything up to 1980. So there you go. Just a bit of a nerdy fact for you there. And again, um, because it's a, an A suffix, if that were a real plate, because this isn't, it's just a vanity plate, it's not road legal, okay? But as you can see, it's Cigar Box Guitar 1A. And yeah, the A suffix was 1963 in the UK, which is when they first started using letters on the registration numbers. And then it was completely different these days, yeah. And I don't understand the modern ones, but like, there you go, a little bit of history for you. And I thought we'd do something of a bit of a combo of like a, 
a license plate guitar, but it'll be a resonator guitar because again, I've not built anything particularly resonator. There were some wonderful comments about um, fitting resonators and I will get back to us all on those because it's keeping all the balls in the air, you know, it's keeping all the plates spinning or whatever. And this is Liesl's brain, as we know, right, which does tend to scatter left, right and centre. So it seems like I've forgotten you, I haven't. And uh, uh, everyone who suggested these things, thank you very much. We do have another marvellous Rocky Patel box. And I thought that would just fit quite nicely on there. And it makes me laugh, actually, because it does remind me of like, in the UK, you know, like an old Ford console or um, a Vauxhall Victor or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I digress. But yeah, so that's the idea. I might as well tell you because, you know, I don't want to keep too many surprises. It's going to have a slim neck because I'm actually going to make a double string diddly bow um, like Gemma. If you saw Gemma. Back whenever it was, during Gemini season, actually, that's correct. So, uh, yeah, in the summer, she has a unique sound. I've not got her in here because I was playing her in the front room earlier. But um, it's going to be something similar to that. But I'm thinking that the metallicness of this plate will really amplify the very delicate sound of that instrument quite nicely. Yeah. So, yeah. I can't remember where I bought this from, it's online, but you can buy these like for car shows and stuff if you want, obviously they're not road legal, and I don't think this actual registration number probably ever existed, although if it did, I promise not to actually drive this on the road, okay, <laughs> for the DVLA, that's right, I'm joking of course, purely for entertainment purposes only, there we go. So, peeps, there it is, really. Um, but before I round up, I didn't quite answer your question, Nancy, um, because, I mean, they're the boxes we've got. Now, there's things like this, which were previous guitars, and they've kind of bitten the dust. Like the lefty that I built. Yeah, because I've never built a lefty, I did kind of everything wrong and it did start to come apart. <laughs> so I took it apart. Um, really nice neck came off of this, which I might rework. And I might rework this. Um, I might convert it into a right-handed guitar. I might turn it back into another lefty or I might build another lefty because I haven't built a lefty since I did this one. And I don't see why we shouldn't build more of them. I really don't. So, uh, yeah. Maybe coming soon, we'll do that as well. So that adds to the number. I did do a very brief kind of count up, Nancy, and um, somewhere around 50, anyway. There's somewhere around 50 cigar boxes at the moment. That's always subject to change with me because I'll see one on Etsy or eBay or something, or I'll be out and about and I'll say, oh, I want that box. Um, so they kind of flow, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, I might as well show you very quickly if I can get to them. Um, actually, no. I think we'll leave that for the next video because I can just see me rummaging around, which will be very boring on camera. <laughs> it's so informal, you see. You know, it's nice to have you around and you're always welcome. And, uh, well, time just flies away, doesn't it, really? So, anyway, peeps, there it is for today. Hopefully that's covered a few things in this uh, extraordinary bits between the bits. And after all that lot, if you are still with me, then thank you ever so much indeed, yeah. And on that note, it leaves me only to say, um, wherever you are, do stay blessed. Wherever you're up to, do stay safe. And whatever life brings, keep building. Thanks for joining me tonight, as ever. It's been an absolute pleasure. Okay then, peeps. Bye for now then. Bye.